My name is Aileen um, and my husband's name is John McSweeney and we live here in Lismire. We are dairy farmers and we have been working hard producing milk um, with our cows for the last 30 years. We joined Blue Dot maybe two years ago and we're delighted to be giving back something back into the environment and we have loads of plans. We have a pond put in last year so we're looking forward to what's going to come into it. We're looking for ducks <laughs> as well as lots of other things and um, we have been setting trees and at the moment there's a hedge being set. The Dewhallow Farming for Blue Dot Catchments project is a European innovation partnership initiative that works with farmers in a North Cork subcatchment of the Munster Blackwater to protect and restore rivers to high status. Farmers are rewarded for maintaining high quality habitats, buffers and other measures that protect water quality. Funding is also provided to farmers to install capital actions through an additional proposed work system. Farmer knowledge transfer is another important part of the project where farmers can visit other farms to see measures installed in the project or attend workshops and talks about relevant topics such as nature-based riverbank stabilisation and farm road upgrades. Here is a, a biodiversity pond, but I suppose as well as a biodiversity pond, it's, it's kind of taking the surface water runoff from the field. That's the idea of it anyway. It's a bit of a steep hill coming down this field and the water finds its way into a pathway coming down the side here. Uh, and into the pond, uh, which is kind of going to dilute the water as it comes down before it might overflow into the, into the river. The idea here actually came from uh, John and Eileen, who wanted to put in a biodiversity pond, uh, and we were just thinking, you know, if you're going to do a biodiversity pond, if you're going to do any, anything like a hedge or a biodiversity pond, like try and put it in a place as well where it's going to benefit water. Uh, so this is really acting as a, as a buffer as well for the river. Uh, what I'm sending on now is a bit, is, is the spoil of, from digging out the pond. So when we dug it out, um, you know, we put the spoil around it and the idea was to take a lot of that away. Um, but it got too wet later on in the year 2023. The summer really wasn't uh, a great summer for doing work out in the bottom of a field like this. Uh, so we had to leave it here. But the idea is to come back. Some of it we can leave because it's, the Bund is actually creating a barrier uh, for the surface water runoff. But some of it like over here um, at, the, at the river side of the pond, um, we're going to take that away next summer when it gets dry again. So because, uh, you know, we had to leave the spoil here and there's a bit of a Bund, you can see very much how the water is coming down into the field and accumulating here and it's very wet underneath us so you know a lot of this hopefully will go into the pond when we can take away some of this spoil uh, and again you know this is an ideal spot for planting some some trees we just can't do it this year until we can take this away next year maybe next winter we'll come back and, and plant here we're here um, on Eileen and John's farm this is a demo farm in, well, we're making it into a demo farm. It's kind of a work in progress on the Do Hello Farming for Blue Dot Catchments uh, project. I suppose it's a demo farm for diffuse runoff, showing how to intercept um, runoff as it comes off the field as opposed to coming off the yard um, or off a, off a farm road. Um, and that is a pressure. This is LO60, the tributary of the LO60, and that this farm drains into. And alongside other pressures like uh, um, industry, water treatment, urban wastewater, hydromorphology, and then the agriculture pressure as well. So there's a lot of pressures on this river, but alongside all the all the pressures, uh, diffuse runoff, runoff coming off the pastures is also a pressure. Um, phosphorus is the nutrient we're concerned about here, and the reason that is is because beneath us, there it's kind of a shale and sandstone uh, geology, which isn't very permeable. And that, that, that results in very heavy soils, poorly draining soils usually. Um, phosphorus then is transported by, can be transported by surface water runoff. It's one of the ways that phosphorus can be transported into uh, a water course. Compared to if we look at nitrates which leach through the soil, they're not going to be able to leach through the soil here because it's, the soil is too heavy. 
So in heavy rain here, along these heavy soils, water is going to run over the land. Uh, and that can carry phosphorus with it from the cow dung, from the slurry, from, cow, from urine. Like one of the great, it's a great thing in Ireland that we can have cows out on grass for so long, but it also means that a lot of excretion is in the field. And during heavy rain, that surface water runoff making its way down through the field can carry phosphorus with it. Um, which is a big problem when you, like, when you think about it, it's a tricky one because you, we've got a lot of fields in Ireland and we've got a lot of water courses between drains and natural rivers. So what we're trying to do really is, is put the right measure in the right place. So if we're going to put measures in, make sure they're targeted, spatially targeted. So what we're using is the pip maps. These are available online on catchments.ie. Um, and this is a combination of data about geology, hydrology, um, soil type, stocking rates. Um, so if we look at this area here, I mean, this is zoomed into John and Eileen's farm, but even if we, if we zoom out when I'm looking at my GIS map, and seeing all the farms in the project, you're looking for these areas of dark blue. This is PIP rank one. Um, so this is showing us areas where there's the, PIP stands for pollution impact potential. So this is showing us areas where there's a higher risk of um, runoff, of P runoff um, from the land. So you can imagine if you're in a free draining place, the PIP rank is probably going to be around five to seven. And you would be thinking then, well, there's probably no point putting in a hedgerow here for water anyway. So you're trying to find these dark blue areas. This is where we're going to have the highest risk of runoff of phosphorus into, into rivers. So you can see a lot of the farm here is pip rank one. It's the highest rank. So that, this is a good farm to, uh, to, to target for um, infield measures for diffuse runoff. So once we know that, then we're looking at our flow paths and delivery points. So again, like I said, phosphorus can be transported by water into into rivers by surface water. So what we're looking at here really is just how the surface water moves off the land. Um, these maps are usually very accurate. They do have to be ground treated. But even, you know, a farmer will know these parts where the water comes off the land and where it enters the, the drains or enters the river. Um, so what you're looking at here is a flow path coming down through the field. And there's a drain here where it enters. You can see another quite concentrated one down at the bottom. So then you're thinking, you know, where could we put in measures to tackle these? Over here as well, like we have our pond down here in this, this fairly concentrated flow pathway. So we're actually standing in the field now where we're going to be doing a number of measures. So often you're trying to look at kind of a suite of measures as opposed to just one thing. You know, we all know about riparian buffers, planting trees near the riverbank um, to slow down the water. But, you know, a buffer doesn't have to be on the river. It can be, you know, you're slowing down water anywhere in the field is a good thing. Um, this is a long field. You're probably looking at maybe 400 meters of a field here. Um, and as we walk down through it, we'll see there's kind of a little natural valley in the middle of it where the water makes its way down through the field. So that's a concentrated flow pathway where the water makes its way down through the field and, and enters at two points on the drain, which is connected to the river. So what we're doing here is we've put in a pond recently and we haven't got a chance to take the spoil away yet, but when we take the spoil away, we're actually going to make a small earthen mound or a bunge, which will actually provide a physical barrier to the water. After that, we have a hedgerow that's going in. And again, another barrier uh, to the water moving straight down through the fields. And at the delivery point where the water is actually entering the drains, we're planting there with trees. So we're just going to walk down through the field now and we're, we're kind of seeing already how the water is going to move through the fields. Um, there's a bit of a, there's a, a fairly strong natural valley here that the water is going to come down from the sides. You know, it's going to, and, and it's going to accumulate here in the center in a flow pathway and, and make its way down through the, through the fields. So you actually, you don't even really need the, the pit maps to, to show you this, but it's, uh, it is very useful and uh, like I said, you know, this is a diffuse runoff from agriculture. It's, it's a big uh, problem to tackle like when there are so many fields and so many drains and water courses, but using the pit maps, you know, it helps us to find where, if we're going to put in measures, like where exactly is the best place to, to put them in. So, 
we're walking down through the middle of the flow pathway now um, and you can even see that you know it's a bit wetter the water's coming down here carrying the phosphorus even the grass it's a bit greener because this is where the phosphorus is kind of moving down through the through the field through the valley so when we get just down here we're kind of right in the middle so right here like we're really at the center at the bottom of the valley uh, where the flow pathway is making its way down through the field it's very wet underfoot um, and so th this is where we're going to target this is where we're going to put our first measure uh, in this field which is going to be the bund um, just a little hump in, in the in the soil uh, to, st to physically stop the water and allow it to pool up here uh, during very heavy rain which will usually be in the winter time anyway when the cows are in out of the field um, that's you know it, it's going to be an earthen mound essentially which grass will grow up on again so it's going to be harsh on this side and just kind of sloped off on the other side but that's going to have no impact on on production either because there's going to be you know there's going to grass grow up on top of the of the of the bund so that's the first target the first measure in, in this suite of measures as we make our way down into this 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 paddock um, again we're going to put the second barrier in here again there's a bit of a valley so what we're going to put in here is a uh, hedgerow uh, just so that you know the water flowing down through the pathway here when it meets the hedge the roots will take up a bit more of the water that doesn't have just a free path to flow straight down into the river and it also you know as they veg up will create a bit of a, a physical barrier to the water moving down through the field as well and of course you know you have all the other benefits of a hedgerow as well like carbon sequestration or you know providing a habitat and providing shelter and a big uh, exposed field like this for Eileen and John for their cattle. So this is our hedge. It's a work in progress. It's actually being planted as we speak. I have my volunteers are just coming back from their tea break. Um, so we have the Duhallow Conservation Volunteer Network out today. Very enthusiastic and uh, planting a couple of hedges for us. One here and another one in another part of the farm. Uh, so the hedge that we see here now it's hawthorn, hazel and gelder rose, nice diversity uh, and we're actually going to, we have the trees put in now, what we're going to do is once they're all in we're going to snip them, cut them right down and we're going to pull biodegradable plastic down over them which will, uh, which will stop, it's a weed suppressing membrane um, which, which will stop them being out competed when they've been cut uh, next summer. Uh, when you cut them as well, that allows them to bush out more and create a nice, uh, dense hedge. So we're at the bottom of that long field now, we're down here. Uh, so we've looked at the hedge, we talked about the bund. Um, those are kind of take, uh, measures to intercept the flow pathway. But what we're looking at now is a buffer measure actually at the delivery point where the water actually enters the water course. So the red here shows like a very high, a very concentrated flow pathway. And at the boundary of John's farm here is the a drain. So this is actually where we are now down here is where the water is coming down the field carrying the phosphorus with it and entering the um, water course. So the way we're going to we're tackling that is we this is, has been done last year we've just worked with John's field and there's a wire going down here already and we just fenced off this corner which fe effectively f fenced off the delivery point uh, and we planted that with willow. These are just taken off trees around the farm, just cut and stuck into the ground. Um, the long grass, the thick, dense vegetation here, that will slow down the surface water runoff. And then the roots of the willow 
will take up that phosphorus that the runoff then drops on the ground. Um, really effective, like you could do this without planting the trees and, and graze it once a year or something to take the phosphorus off. But if you look at like the results from the Smarter Buffers project with Chagask, um, the grass buffers are probably less effective and really, if you can get trees in here, uh, that's probably the best way to do it. Willow, cheap and cheerful, full of uh, natural rooting hormones, full of oxens. All you need to do is cut a slip off a tree already on the farm and stick it into the ground and it'll grow. Um, so a, a nice way to, to get locally, local provenance trees uh, on the farm.